Hello, friends, and welcome into Vol Club Confidential, Episode 7. We have an exciting show for you tonight as we transition a little bit to basketball. We'll talk football, too, and that exciting signing day celebration that Spire has planned coming up with the Vol Club on the 21st. And that we'll do that with Brandon Spurlock in just a minute. But Tennessee's basketball team, 9-1 and on the season, coming off a big 56-53 win up in Brooklyn over Maryland. First time those two teams have met since the 1980s. And, of course, the Orange Bowl is coming up December 30th. Tennessee and Clemson, the Tennessee basketball team, the Tennessee football team, both rank sixth nationally as we sit here in the middle part of December. An exciting time here on Rocky Top. Now let's bring in Brandon Spurlock of Spire. Brandon, ball club, big signing day celebration coming up on the 21st. How can fans find out more about the event? Yeah, we're really pushing pushing hard here, um, closing on that date, December 21st, um, 6.30 p.m. at the press room downtown. So really excited. You know, I don't know that we've done, uh, as, as a university, done a signing day event here in several years. And so really trying to take it to another level and do a twist on the traditional signing day event. I know you and Brent Hubbs will be involved in having Coach Heupel there. And actually, the twist for this one is, and I don't know if it's been done, but having some of the actual signees present. It's um, never been done before. Has it not? Okay, I no. figured you'd know about that. So, you know, hopefully that's something to get people out. You know, we've got a pretty exciting flow. We've got a VIP event, you know, before the 6.30 time um, that we're working with people on. But, you know, starting at 6.30, all the, not all the players, but the ones that are um, here early, they'll, they'll, they're will they enrolled early they'll be there and we'll kind of have them set up around the room where people will be able to meet them get autographs kind of spend some time with them and they'll hear from you guys and coach hypel um, about you know really a state of the union about the season that we just had but most importantly focusing on signing day and kind of what's what's ahead yeah brent hubs and i will break down the class and then we will talk about and tell recruiting stories with the current <clears throat> members of the class and then of course the coaching staff which uh, is led by coach hypel basketball season in full swing, as we just talked about, Tennessee nine and one on the year. Uh, big game next week on the road at Arizona. But once they return home for SEC play, you all will have some not. I mean, not tailgates because nobody's going to try to be outside in January, but like some inside type tailgate stuff during the games and some watch parties. Yeah, I think this is the cool part of having, you know, your, your, your programs competing at the highest level. You kind of get the whole calendar to work with, not just football, but um, baseball and basketball. So in the spring, you know, we did the baseball porches. We did some of that early on as we were getting the, the vol club off the ground. You know, with football, we did the tailgates. And with basketball, we're going to do watch parties here at our office. We've got a pretty good setup, you know, to do that. And then we're going to take that show on the road. Um, so, so vol club members should be looking out for that soon in terms of, you know, major cities and then cities where where we have an interest, you know, between Nashville, Memphis, Tri-Cities, and Chattanooga doing those watch parties. And then um, the other thing that we've got going right now for our members um, or, or, or new members is anyone that does like an annual membership before the end of the year, there's certain promotions that they can take advantage of um, in terms of gift cards and things like that. So check out thevolunteerclub.com for all that information, the, the signing day event, the promotions, um, and then the watch parties will be reaching out on those. That's right. And make sure you check the newsletter with the Volunteer Club. Now, let's get to the main attraction. It's the little big guy, Zakai Ziegler. Joined by the man of the hour, Zakai Ziegler. Zakai, sophomore year uh, underway. You guys are nine and one, as we talked about a little bit earlier in the show. How different does this year feel versus last year, though, having been in the system for a year? Uh, honestly, I just feel like I got a much bigger role. Last year, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I was just trying to do, do whatever it takes to get on the court and whatever it takes to impact the team. But this year, I started to, I, as the summer was coming along, I knew that I had more of a more of a standard and I would be on team scout reports and I was I would pretty much have to have to get past some some key defenses and I'll have to know more what I'm doing. I wouldn't be able to just get out there and play, but it's now just I have to know that um I'm, I'm on somebody's key list. This is episode seven of Vol Club Confidential. Who knows how many we'll do a hundred, a thousand, whatever. I don't think there'll ever be two contrasting voice styles. You've got the <laughs> <laughs> the pride of Rogersville, Tennessee here, and then you've got the pride of Long Island here. So it's, you know, you've got the country twang, and then you've got the, the New York. <laughs> yeah, everybody get on me about my voice. A lot of people tell me my voice don't match my body. I've been hearing that since I was in, like, sixth grade. 
All right, so let's let's go all the way back. When you're a kid in New York, at what point did you l- truly remember loving basketball the way you do? Honestly, I, I took the transition because I was I I used to hate basketball. Honestly, when I was little, my mom made me play. Like I was I liked football, and that was the only thing I ever wanted to do. My cousin was a football player, and she she had told me she was gonna sign me up for basketball, and I, I just started crying. I was like, man, I, I'm not I'm not trying to do that. Like that's Basketball's for girls. It's not enough contact. And then I I went to first practice, my first game, and I was I did pretty good. And I was like, it's not it's not too bad. But then eighth grade, I finally said, yeah, no more football, and I uh, just I'm gonna just stick to basketball. You used to ride around. You you take those subway cars. Mike Wilson did a great story on you last year. You know yeah. about how you'd hide out from the conductor because <laughs> you didn't have the money to pay for the for the you know for the subway ride. When you're going to those courts and you're showing up, you know, yeah. everybody's going to look at him and go, hey, he can't play. Look, he's too short, this and that. How much pride did you take in that? Like, I'm going to show you. I took a lot of pride. but And honestly, going to the courts, it wasn't that I was little. It was that I was from Long Island. That's, that's what it was more so because I, I used to spend a lot of time in, like with my friends that, was, that lived in Queens, Harlem, like the Bronx. And so I, at one point, a lot of people did think I was from Queens. And I and somebody said something, and I was like, "Man, I'm I'm from Long Island," and it was like, "Oh, y'all, 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 y'all a bunch of soft boys." So that's where it really came from originally. Like a lot of people not like respecting Long Island, and then at this point, I feel like I got it's a lot of hoopers out of Long Island now that's well respected. How much do you like the outdoor courts? Is that is that is that just kind of like is that basketball in its most pure essence for you? Definitely, it's more it's more like a a vibe. It's like a, a safe space. Everybody's just outside, and and you, it's just it just feels more free instead of just being inside. I know it's not based in New York. Big fan of White Man Can't Jump. Oh yeah, definitely. I watched that movie maybe a hundred times. I, I love that movie. That's your jam. Yeah, you Wesley Snipes. Yeah, that's me. I'm that. I could jump. <laughs> a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. In those games, how much? I mean, you're like you're a trash talker. So I mean, <laughs> how, is that where you perfected it? Uh, definitely. Yeah, I, me and my mom, we trash talk a little bit each other. And even like, say I'm playing bad in the game, she'll probably trash talk me the worst out of everybody. Whoa, whoa. your mom trash talks you? Yes. If I'm playing bad, she will trash talk me the worst out of everybody. I, I can tune everything out. But once I hear her say something, it'll be like, I'll be like, oh my god, like she got to, she got to stop. She because she knows how to get me with. Is that motivation? Me, oh, oh, definitely. And but we go we go back and forth all the time, even if it's a workout, and I'm, I'm missing shots and I'm starting to get mad at myself. She said this was her favorite saying when I was growing up. If I'm playing bad, she'll she'll say I was playing like a girl, and then she'll be like, if you wanted to be a cheerleader, you should have just told me that. And I used to get that used to make me heated, but then that that didn't make me play better. So I'm glad she did that. But still to this day, we still try to. So out. what you're telling me is you and your mom on game day <laughs> would be the equivalent of Reggie Miller and Spike Lee. Yes. Are, are you are you, you're trash talking your mom the yes. way he trash talks Spike Lee? Yes. I can't answer her phone call on the game day. I can text her because she can't say what she wants to say through a text. She can't emphasize it as much, but. I cannot talk to her on that phone because of how she, how much she tries to talk to me before a game. Seriously, <laughs> she's crazy. So what? You you go back home, you get the big win. I, I know y'all didn't offensively play as well as you wanted to. Did you get MVP um, up there in Brooklyn? How big was that for you? Just to, you because you, you're going back to your home state. Yeah, I mean it was a good feeling, but honestly, I didn't like realize it until today. Like how how big it was. I was talking to my cousin, and he had brought it up, and I was just like, yeah. Yeah, like we 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 won and it was, it was a fun it was a fun game, and he was like, man, you gotta sometimes you just gotta sit back and realize what you actually just did. Like it was times that I dreamed of being in those positions and playing in the Barclays Center. And actually, when I was in middle school, I played in the Barclays Center when they had first remade it, and I was I, that was the brand new courts. That's when um, as in Deron Williams was there, and it was it was really big just to be able to come back and now from transitioning from middle school to be there in college but it was a really really fun like experience Knicks or Nets? N- Nets for sure. Not a Knicks guy huh? No. Um, yeah I'm all the way a Nets fan. You like Madison Square Garden though? Not after no? the performance we had last well. year. So no. Nah. 
Uh, but I do like. But I, that's the mecca, though, right? Yeah, for any yeah. sport, whether it's an mecca. entertainment for a concert yeah. or, or you know, basketball, hockey, whatever, to play an MSG yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, definitely. I remember I used to like when because the trains I would take, the main platform was Penn Station, and that's where MS is right under MSG. Yeah. So once I come out, come out the train, I'll just say, like I'll wait a second. It's a big screen outside. They used to play the games on. So it would be like it would, it would be really cool just to sit out there and watch those games. And last year to be able to play in it was it was like a like something checked off my bucket list. New York New York teams. I think sports in general. I, some people may argue with this, but I, I think sports in general are are neat when Chicago, New York, L.A. have those teams that are really good. You know when the Knicks are good. You know when the Yankees are good. Um, the Giants or Jets. Yeah. You know it's a special sports town. Yeah. How, how much do you you know? How much did you kind of have that ingrained into you? Were you were you a big fan of all sports when you were growing up? You said you loved football. Yeah, I was. I was really big on football and basketball. Giants or Jets. See, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I, I was a big time Troy Polamalu fan. I, I used to wear my hair out like him. I thought I was the next Troy Polamalu. But yeah, I'm I'm a Steelers fan. But it was ingrained into me. Like, when I was younger, I remember my mom and my dad taking me to, um, well, I don't really remember, but I remember them telling the story of how, how they took me to Madison Square Garden, and uh, we went to go watch Stephon Marbury play. Oh. And they they was telling me, I kept saying, like, yeah, I want, they got me this little little uh, basketball from the toy shop or whatever, the shop in MSG, and I was just kept saying, like, Mom, I want to put that ball, this ball in that basket. I want to shoot in that basket. They kept telling me I was trying to run down and go shoot the, shoot in the hoop. But that that that's a story that I always remember. How much do you follow basketball history? I mean, like, do you know, do you, like, do you know where Stephen Marbury played a college ball at? Do you, do you do you follow it like that, or do you? Not really. I follow it a, a little bit based on players and which, which I like most, but not not too much. Not too much. Jordan or LeBron? I say who's Le- the goat? I say LeBron because I saw what LeBron did. I did not see what Michael Jordan did. I hear how, how much did you watch the last dance though, and did that kind of? I watched it, but still, you're not living I, it. I, I, yeah, I'm not living it. Like I understand, but I saw what LeBron did. That three when he came back, three one finals. That was that was some of the craziest things I ever saw. Do you and your teammates ever get into that debate, or are you all oh, just yes. all like <laughs> how, how many teammates on this team? would take Jordan because I mean most of them are in the LeBron era yeah. so like it's kind of natural for someone at your age to go with LeBron whereas like my age it's natural to go Jordan yeah I, I would say probably I would say two but I wouldn't say that they would pick Jordan or LeBron I think they would just they would just want the argument they would get their yeah. point across they would just try to win the argument and that's definitely Olivier and Jamal they are going to try to argue their way and win the are they the greatest debaters on the team? Yes, yes. Them, those two having a conversation, uh, one of the funniest things I've seen. So you're telling me that <laughs> they, they should be the tandem of the law firm of Kamwa and Meshack? Yes, definitely, because they they're gonna make sure that you know what their point is, and they're gonna get their point across, and they're gonna make <laughs> sure you believe what they believe. They're crazy. <laughs> All right, so. When when you're growing up and you're and you're hitting those 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 gyms, you know, uh, in Long Island, at what point, you know, when you started to really love basketball, you know, when you got past eighth grade, did you really start to perfect who you are as a player? You know, little jitterbug, defensive, just pest, just all up in your grill, and then you know, quicker in the hiccup, getting off the bounce. I would say about a few months before I came to UT. Because I always, I was always like, hey, I got to score the ball, I got to do this, that, and I had a AAU coach. Well, I lived in Queens, and uh, the a, this AAU coach, Coach Shan, he had called me from New York Lightning, and he was asking me to play and stuff. And he, he, he had used to live in the projects that I used to live right next to, so he had felt like, like we had a connection out of the way type already, and he was a small guard. And so he he had told me like yeah uh, this, if you want to get to it you want to get to it this this isn't gonna work though my way is, won't work and I just took it on the chin and said all right I'll, I'll listen to you and once once I finally listened to him PJ Jam is when I actually performed and, and and did what he had told me to do and now I'm sitting here today. You're this hard nosed tough kid from New York. Rick Barnes is really tough to play for and he demands so much. <laughs> out of 
his point guards. Yeah. I mean, we had Josiah here in episode one. He talked about, you know, when he first got here, he hated Rick Barnes. Yeah. He, he But now it's like he has this great appreciation for what he's brought out of him. Yeah. Is, is that similar for you? I yeah, mean, and how, and was it different, or you just like I can roll with anything? Uh, it was it was kind of more like I can roll with it because last year, honestly, I don't think the coaches. I feel like the coaches knew what I could bring, but I don't think any of us expected it to be like that, including me. But this year, once once I, my role got bigger and he started to get on me more, at like after the Colorado loss, when yeah. everybody was saying, "Oh, Coach Barnes was doing being." When he moved you to the bench and yeah. then had you coming off and you played just as much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I felt like it was just tough love and it was sure. just it was just out of he knows what I should do and what I can do. So I don't I don't see it as him being mean or just just rough only on me or picking on me. I just see it as constructive constructive criticism. How would you describe him? I, 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 Josiah described him as a called him a psychopath, which is funny because because I mean like how how he co- how he coaches a certain way, but as soon as yeah. practice ends, that's why it goes back to putting your arm around him and back to like you know talking about you know yeah. just life and having a good time. I would thousand percent agree with what Josiah said. I've seen him one day yell at somebody, and then turn around and just start laughing and joking around, and turn back around and start screaming at us. Walk up the court. And turn and start laughing. So he's two different people on and off the court. Off the court, he's he's one of the most down to earth guys I know. Like he he really cares about us more more than humans and people rather than just basketball players. On the court, he just wants us to be the best we can be. Basketball staff's pretty tight knit. I mean, he's had a few, you know, a little bit of turnover here recently with with you know Dez getting a job and mm-hmm. and and you know different different people moving on. Um, but you know you've got Mary Carter over there. She's yeah. a key piece to the puzzle. Yeah. Tom Sekoviak, key piece to the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Football's so big. Basketball, you know, yeah. way fewer players. Right. Sports staff, all that. How would you describe the group? Now, I don't mean just players. The whole deal. It's like the quote we always use. You know, it's not about me. Everybody is always putting their foot forward for somebody else. They're not just doing something rather for to benefit themselves. They always. Pretty much, we always have each other back. You know, like if if it puts me in a bad position, but puts everybody else in a good position, I think everybody will will do what they have to do. That, that's how I describe our our whole program. You know, most people know uh, Zakai's story. Last year, middle of the year, um, you, your house got burned down in New York. You're, luckily, no one was you know hurt, yeah. but you know you lost everything in a blink. Right. You had to go out and and play like right almost immediately. Yeah. When you found out and then had to have that quick turnaround, what's going through your mind? Honestly, I, w- I was trying to keep it off my mind as much as possible, but it was just it was just so tough because I remember we went to Georgia, we had shoot around. I was I wasn't I wasn't feeling it that much, and then we got to the game. We started warming up, and I, I was fine. And then I remember right before the game, I turned and I saw my mom, and I was just like all my energy just shut down. And once I got in the game, it was. It was it was it was ugly. I, I didn't play well, but thankfully that was the one time I got some sympathy from Coach Barnes, and he he <laughs> let he let me off the hook that that one time. And I told him it won't happen again. But it it, it was pretty tough, a pretty tough turnaround. But then after that Georgia game, we played Arkansas, and it was it was all back to normal. Twenty four hours, Tennessee fans raised three hundred sixty five thousand yeah. dollars, enough to, for your mom and everybody to relocate down here. Um, What'd that mean? I mean, I, you know, I, in the moment, I know you're so appreciative, but, yeah. you know, a year later, looking back on it, yeah. I mean, what's that say? I, I see Vol Nation as a really a, a true family. It, it was it was much more than basketball at that point. It was A just, family you weren't even a part of just a few months earlier. Exactly. That's how I looked at it. I'm really big on family. My mom, she, we, we're super close. We, we're like best friends. We, we, we argue all the time. We talk all the time. We... We're like we're just like best friends. So just to see the uh, people of all nation have our back like that, and in a blink of a lie, just t- just say they can help us out, and and just for it to come to that, it was it was like words can't explain like how thankful and how much I really appreciate it. You see what the football team, uh, you know, did this year at ten and two. Yeah. You know th- those kids getting Tennessee football back. You were part of a team last year that won the SEC tournament for the first time. In over forty years, yeah. 
you know, can you can you compute what that means to people, and then you know what it just meant to the program? Oh, it it was it was a crazy feeling because we didn't we didn't stop playing that game until that final buzzer went off. It was maybe one second left. We were up fifteen, and we all looked up, and then everybody started celebrating. And we were it was like a it was just a, a a crazy feeling. It's a feeling that I expect to have again this year too. Nickname is it just Z or is it ZZ? Z Z Z Ziggy. I got a lot of people call me Kai. But yeah. What's I'm your favorite? Along that line. I honestly just say Kai. Like if somebody asks me, I would say my name is Kai. What's your middle name? <laughs> it starts with a Z. So it's three Z's. Yeah, triple Z. You can take a guess what it is. <laughs> Ze- Zeke. Zakai Zamik Ziggler. Oh, I was never going to guess yeah, that. Yeah, I wanted to see what you <laughs> guessed it. What if I had, though? You didn't like Yeah, hey, I would have said you looked it up. That's what I would have said. <laughs> I'm thorough. I'm not that thorough. Um, so you got Triple J. You got Triple Z. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, maybe that's a new thing. <laughs> All right, we're going to take questions from Instagram and Twitter. Um, how's your family settling into the new house down here? Oh, they're settling great. They they love it. My nephew, he he flies down the stairs all all day long. He, my mother, she loves that she has a kitchen to herself. She could cook. She can move around. But it just feels good that we have a place that we can actually call home. Favorite moment as a Vol basketball player so far is what? Definitely the SEC chip by by far because that, like you said earlier. It, we haven't won that in over 40 years, and a lot of people have attempted to do it, and they couldn't. But just for us to have something that's went down in history and nobody can take it away from us is a really good feeling. This one is not from from social media, but it ties in you you with one of the questions about wearing number five. You got permission from Lofton to wear five. Yeah. Um, you know, how have you really kind of bonded with him? Have you had to get to spend some time with him and just kind of pick his brain? I, I remember the first day I actually saw him, and he was he was in the gym shooting. We had to end the practice, and he started shooting. I had no idea who he was. Everybody kept saying, "Yo, he 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 could shoot the ball. He could shoot oh. the ball." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Like I I didn't have no idea who he was or his background. I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And then the next day we we had practice again, and there's this drill that Olivier does. Is you have to make 14 shots, pretty much one at seven spots, there, there and back, and you can't miss three. If you miss three, you got to start over. And um, Olivia was doing it. He was struggling a little bit. And then Chris Lofton went up there, and he did it, and he missed, like, two shots. Oh, no, he missed one shot. And I was like, that's not an easy drill. I was like, maybe I could do it. I was like, maybe it's not that hard. And I think I actually did do it my first try, and then he did it again. And then I I tried to get it a second time, and I I couldn't do it. And I was like, man, how old? I thought he was pretty young. And then I found out how old he was. I was like, man, so who is he? And I started hearing the history behind it. I was like. You watching highlights online? Yeah, I have. And I, I saw that the, play. the shot over Durant? I was just about to say that. I remember Coach Barnes had brought it up, too, exactly where it was at. And I saw the clip. I was like, wow. That, he did one at crazy. Vanderbilt on the road, too. And it was it was even further than that. I mean, like, just pulled one. I mean, like, it was barely across <laughs> midcourt. I and mean, it was, you know, before Curry was doing that, yeah. right? And he pulled it right across midcourt and just buries it. I mean, it oh, was. He, he made one in the NCAA tournament to, uh, you know, advance them to a game winner. Like, yeah. where he – I basically had to take it over the corner of the backboard. Uh, basically, as time expired, I mean, Man, that's some shooter's clutch. Touch. Shooter's touch. Shooter's touch is real. Take it back to New York. How much do you know about Ernie and Bernie? I didn't know much about Ernie, but I knew a lot about Bernie. Not a lot, but I knew it like he was pretty much one, if not the greatest player in New York or from New York. He he. I did not know he came to uh, Tennessee before my visit. I saw the big banner that said he's in the Hall of Fame. Yep. I was like, man, what? He, he went here? But he he definitely is one of those goats in New York. All right, back to social media questions. If you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Fried chicken, for sure. I could eat fried chicken every day. To From me. where? What's yeah. your go-to? What's your go-to in New York for that? I would just say my mom cooking. Okay, I was I'm with you. My mom making it, but a store in New York. I like deli food a lot. Deli food or Spanish food, like chicken and rice or beef. no New York style pizza. I love New York style pizza too, but that, uh, I anything eat, close I to that here? So much. Mm-mm. No. Is there anything? Uh, is there anything locally that 
that would be similar to something you ate growing up that you really like, oh, that feels like back home? There's a place called Dulce's. It's Jamaican food. <laughs> that, that, that's what I would say is the closest, the closest thing because I used to eat a lot of Jamaican food too growing up. All right, this one. I don't, I don't normally read the names, but this one is uh, from one of your teammates. We'll see if you can guess who it is. Why are you such a messy roommate? No. BJ, is he the BJ that told me said that? It's not, actually. It's Josiah. Josiah's not my roommate. And Josiah cannot talk. <laughs> I wish he was here. I could ask him why his locker is so messy. <laughs> <laughs> Most competitive person on this team not named Zakai Ziegler. That's a tough one because Olivier, super competitive. Jamal is super competitive. Josiah, Santi. I would say, honestly, everybody. But if I had to pick one, I would, I would definitely say Olivier. All right, so you got all these these guys that have, you know, they're internationals, whether it's, you know, from Finland or mm-hmm. wherever. Do any of them ever talk in a game in the foreign language so the officials don't know what they're saying when they're upset? I heard Santi do it last year maybe two times, but he doesn't do, he doesn't do that that much. Uros, he Uros doesn't care. He'll he'll say it in English. Yeah, he'll just, he'll say, just it. say it in English. He, does, he, doesn't <laughs> he, does, he does not care. But, but Santi, I've heard him say say something in Spanish a few times. That's the only person I can. Do you ever get does that does that does that get to you? No, I, I, I think it's hilarious when they when they say stuff, especially Uros when he talks in his language. He just he always messes with me. I just start laughing. I think it's hilarious when he does that. Like he'll be on the phone talking with somebody from back home. And I'll hear it and just start dying laughing. He's like, he's like Z, are you serious? This, this is just how I, this is my language. But I don't know why. It's just so funny to me. Favorite sport to go to, not named basketball. Is it football or do you like baseball? You went to a bunch of baseball games last yeah, year. I definitely did. I, I never went to a baseball game before I got here. So you never went to a Yankees game growing up? Never. I was I only I went to a Knicks game when I was younger. I went to a few Nets games and I went to a few Giants and Jets games. But I never been to a baseball game. I remember Josiah was trying to get me. He was pulling me out of the room when we were roommates, and he was like, "Hey, let's go to this baseball game." And I wasn't really feeling it because I never really watched baseball like that. I didn't yeah. understand it. I kept saying like, "I'm not trying to go to a three hour game for the score to be one to two. I don't want. I don't. <laughs> I'm not. I don't want to do that." And so then, soccer really where you shut down then? Yeah, soccer. Um, I went. To You're a, so quick though. I think you could be good at that. Maybe. Maybe that takes a lot. That takes a lot. A lot of footwork skill. I I don't know if I have that yet. (laughs) But uh, I went to a soccer game too, and I stayed until halftime. And I was like, "Man, I have to leave. I can't. I can't do it." (laughs) It was zero zero. I I didn't like it. But baseball definitely. I went to a few a few of those games, and I once I started to learn like how to actually play it, not play it, but the rules of it. Sure. It was it was pretty fun, and I know some baseball players too. I was in class with them at that time, so it was it was pretty cool. How much do you enjoy that portion of it from a just a, being another being a classmate? You know, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty fun. Like it's it's fun than being a, a regular student and just going to other games uh, and hanging hanging out with regular classmates and non athlete classmates. It's, it's pretty cool. Did you end up down on the field after the Alabama game? Oh, okay, so I told Josiah in the beginning of the game once we got up fourteen zero or tw- we was up twenty one zero, and I said, yo. If we lose, if we're losing at any point, I'm, I'm leaving because I I don't feel good. Like I, I was tired. There was a lot of people. I was hungry. You left. And I said, Yo, if we go down one point, I will. I'm leaving. I'm letting you know now. He's like, Okay, well, I didn't think we were gonna go down at any point, but that's what I was saying. And then we went down. and I was like, Yeah, I, I'm, I'm leaving. I got to my room. I was laying down for a second, and then I heard everybody. I was with Uros. I left and went to Uros and Julian's room. We were hanging out. And then all we hear is the people just start banging on doors. Everybody was running around. People were running out of, out of our building. And I was like, what's going on? And we were all confused. And you like, fire drill? It was like, what? It was like, and then everybody was like, yeah, we won. Man, I wish I was on that field for that moment, though. That's one. That's that's probably the biggest moment. I was like, man, I'm, I was actually mad that I missed. So you had fear of missing out? Yeah, it was that was that was a tough one to miss. It's all good though. It's it's fun. Hopefully, I experience it again though. You know, they stormed a basketball yeah, court a time or two around here. Hopefully, you know, never Maybe. know. Get Maybe. a big one. Get a big one. Yeah, I, but I don't think so. I don't think that'll happen because we're we're supposed to win every game. 
So I wouldn't see it as that, as any big wins. Because we're supposed to be number one. If we beat the number two team, supposed to beat them. So, how much do you love the Kentucky atmosphere? Oh, I love it. That that now that's a game that's a lot of trash talking in. That definitely is. SEC play has deals with a lot of trash talking, but that Kentucky Tennessee game is, is definitely one that's always on everybody's calendar. Everybody, and that's I can't wait for that one this year. And we got them home first this year. Home games or road games? Because some people like going in kind of the, yeah, the, I like, the lines. I like, I, like road game. I love going to road games. But I honestly feel like it's not easier to play on road games, but I feel more comfortable. In road. Not more comfortable, but I don't know the word. But I feel no pressure going into away games. Take away Thompson Bowling and Pratt. Favorite spot on campus? Favorite spot on campus? Neyland. Do you like or that? Lindsey Nelson, one of those two. What about from an academic standpoint? Like, do you ever like like you ever like walk by the torch bearer and go, yeah, you know, and think like, okay, what's the story here? I did, and I never asked the story though. <laughs> I always wondered it, like, what was the whole thing behind the torch barrier? But I would say I don't know what it's called, but it's the it's like the walkway where it's something that nobody's supposed to step on, or it's bad luck. Oh, it's the yeah, I'm it's not the sure seal. It's cool. Yeah, and I saw a couple of people laying down on it one time, and that was the funniest thing ever. Because I didn't, under, I didn't understand like why everybody was looking at this guy like laying. Like I, I was looking at him like, why is he laying down on like in the middle, in the middle of it? And everybody was just looking at him like, well, what is you like? What is he doing? And then I heard the, the story behind it like it's bad luck if you if you do that. And that was but that was so. Now hilarious. do you go around? Oh, I definitely do. I stepped on it a few times before I knew that too. Uh oh. But I think it brought us good luck because we won the SEC chip. So, uh, but I'm not going to take that risk and do it again, though. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> not happening. Favorite uh, app on your phone's what? Probably Apple Music. I love listening to music. What do you listen to? Lil Baby. Lil Baby. I listen to a lot of New York rappers, too. Buddy, I have done many, many, many recruiting commitment videos. Mm. And every kid wants little baby, yep. and it's never the same song twice. I've, I've, he's the Dave Matthews of that genre because he's got so many songs. Yep. I've never used the same one. I'm like, when's a kid gonna ask me? Like, hey, download this song. And then the worst is like when they go, I want this song, and then you download it, and then you're like, no, 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 I want to do this song. Uh, no, 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 I want to do this song. I'm like, okay, now I'll download three songs. Yeah, I was like that on my commitment when they asked me what song I wanted to do it, and I was just like, huh. It was like three different little baby songs, and I said, all right, I want this one. But it was all little baby for sure. <laughs> What's something most people don't know about you? A lot of people don't know. I'm actually very shy. A lot of people don't know that. They expect me to be, not the loudest person, but I feel like they expect me to be very outgoing. But I like when I go to class and I just sit back and I'm super quiet in class. A lot of people don't don't expect that from me. Now, when I get to know you, I'll probably be the loudest person you know. But before you get to know me, I'll be a little bit shy. So can I expect you to yell at me from from now on when you see me? Not like yell at me, but you definitely, know, definitely, you're gonna be chatting my ear off. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, here's your question. So my daughter <laughs> plays. You know, she plays in the Hardin Valley Youth Basketball League. And she, she's on the short side. Yeah. And so Saturday I was explaining to her, I'm like, hey, you can't – once you get the rebound, you can't go down. Once you take it down, you're done because yeah. the girls, other girls will get in there. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I started showing her highlights of you. Yeah. I had her watching the game the other night. Yeah. What advice would you give her? Because she said – because her thing was, I'm shorter than everybody. And I said, yeah, but that's that you can't let that be, you know, your handicap. Yeah. You, you have to find ways to, to overcome. You do that. I would just say playing the hardest because that, believe it or not, that is intimidating to a lot of people. Once they see you step on the court and they, they see you, that you're trying their hard, your hardest and they might say, all right, I need, to, I need to raise my level of play just because they see how much how much you're doing and how much you actually care. But I would just say giving it your all no matter what on that court. What's the one thing individually you want to accomplish before you're done? We know what you want to accomplish team-wise, championships, yeah. when hang banners, but individually. Before I leave, I want to get a defensive player of the year. That That is one goal of mine that I always looked at, and I always felt like it was the, it was more cool than being an MVP. One way to keep Barnes off of you, too. Yeah, definitely. But I always felt like that was, that, that was more, like, 
That was a cooler look than being a most outstanding player or, or most valuable player, def- defensive player. Well, Zakai, we appreciate the time. It's a great kind of dive and deep dive and kind of getting to know you. Troy Palomalu, yep. you're a big football guy. Yep. It's never been to a Yankees game. We're learning baseball. I got to go to one. When and I he missed back. the Alabama celebration. I was on the outside. I, was, I wasn't inside kneeling. I was on the street, though. So I got a little bit of it. He got a little bit of it. What a story. And he's just a sophomore. And we're only 10 games into his sophomore season. Many, many more stories to be written over the next couple of years. We appreciate you joining us on Volklo Confidential. Appreciate you.